It's critical when creating content for business to stay on brand and on message. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a brand kit in the new Create app for Microsoft 365 Copilot. We're gonna pull in a style guide, add logos and images, add fonts, and even a brand voice. By the end, you'll have a reusable brand kit that's ready to crank out polished content with the power of Copilot. Let's get started. Okay, so when we go into the Create app, this is where we're able to find a brand kit and be able to configure a new brand kit. As a reminder, to get to the new Create app in Microsoft 365 Copilot, you're gonna go to m365.cloud.microsoft, and then there's the Create button right there. You could also just do slash create at the end, and that'll take you to the Create app. Now, we can start creating from here, but we're gonna get into starting a brand kit. That is found under the more section right here at the top. So we're gonna click more, and then we're gonna click brand kits. Once we're on the brand kit page, we're able to see all of the brand kits that we've created or are available to us uh, from our administrators. Now that's under the, the all or the official. I haven't published anything official yet, and then there's the created by you. That's the stuff that I've created. Now, the only thing I've created is something for my day job for EY. So I could, you know, show the capabilities to my internal stakeholders, but we are going to create a brand new brand kit up here in the corner for Jolly Roger Java. So let's click new brand kit in the upper corner and we're going to call it Jolly Roger Java or the name of your company. And then you're gonna click create right here. And that brings us to this kind of a wizard page of adding a logo and images and all kinds of things. So while that's loading up, we're gonna go find our style guide from our marketing website. This might be on some kind of brand zone or uh, content management system that you use at your company for all of your logo assets and everything. In the fictional company called Jolly Roger Java, we've got a marketing SharePoint and we've got a style guide that is available for the employees in the organization. So we're gonna open up that style guide and we've got all of the information about the brand. We've got the logo info. We've got the color palette we wanna use and the fonts that we want to use. So we're gonna use this as our reference to build our brand kit. Okay, so let's start out with the logos. I happen to have the logos ready to go on my computer. So I'm gonna click add logo in the middle here. And then under my downloads folder, I'm able to go into the logos folder and I can select all of those logos and then click open. And that uploads those three logos to the brand kit. So now we're off to the races. Under the color section, we've got a primary pa uh, color palette. We can also add new color palettes if we want to. We just have a primary one for Jolly Roger Java. So we're gonna go up here to the color palette and we happen to have the hex values right here. So we're gonna copy those and we're going to add them in one at a time. So I'm gonna go back over to the style guide and we've got that one right there. And then I'm gonna keep adding, we do have like secondary colors, so I could have a second palette. I'm just gonna stick with one palette because you know I want more than just two colors in it. So we're gonna keep adding these and we're going to copy the deep seal teal. And we're gonna paste that in and I'm clicking add new color each time. So we're gonna click that. And then the last one is gunmetal gray. And there is that. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six colors added to my color palette. And then under fonts, we're going to add our brand fonts. If we go back to our style guide. We can see that if we scroll down, here's the typography. We've got Parata 1, Bebus New, and Roboto are our main fonts that we use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy those. Uh, and then we're gonna go in and add a new font. And we can scroll through, there's tons of fonts available. We could select one of these, or 
If you don't have a font in the list, but you have a custom font for your business, you can also upload a custom font. But I think all of my fonts, see, I don't have Parada. Oh, there it is. Parada one. So that's my main font. And then we're going to go into the style guide and this Bebis new. We're going to add a new font and then we're going to paste that in. And the, the problem is I have like a space on the end of it. So there's Bebis new. And then we've got Roboto is the next one. So again, we're going to just paste in Roboto. I'm going to keep the, the plain one. And then uh, Garamond Premiere Pro. And I've got like some alternatives that I could use if those weren't available to me. But it looks like they're all going to be there. Uh, Garamond Premiere. Okay, so I don't have that Garamond Premiere Pro. So I'm just going to use Georgia as the backup right there. So there's Georgia. Now, you... You'll also have probably in your style guide, like what you want to use for uh, like headers and subheaders and things like that. That's what this H1, H2, and then H3, H4, and then body stuff. So the bottom two are for bodies. The middle one is for secondary or subheaders. And then the top one is for uh, headers. So that's where this drop down comes into play right here for the fonts. So the first one is a heading. The second one, we're going to select a subheading right here. So that makes it a subheading. The last two are going to be body fonts. So we're going to drop those down. And now I've got two body fonts, a subheader and a header. Then this is important. You need to click done on each of those fonts so that it is uh, saved to your brand kit. So we're going to collapse that. We're going to collapse the colors. And then under images, I've also got some downloaded images as well. Now, if I go into my images folder, I've got lots of pictures that I just created that are for different uh, image libraries that we can use. So we're going to open all those and those are uploaded to my brand kit as well. And those are going to upload one at a time. While that's going, we can talk a little bit about templates. Now, I haven't... Uh, done a lot with the uh, the templates yet in uh, Jolly Roger Java, but you can create a new template and basically like uh, select what type of um, sizing and everything that you want. If you got custom sizes or things like that. So we can have like a Facebook page cover that would be like a, a 16 by by nine layout and you could build your own templates for different banners and things like that but i'm not going to go through building those you can also upload if you have a uh, single file ppts so powerpoint files as a uh, a single slide you can also add those in as templates to kind of inform your design style and layouts but i don't have any right now so we're going to move on from there the last one is your brand voice and the brand voice is basically how do you want it to sound? What's the tone and things like that? You have 1000 characters that you can put into this box. Now, if you've looked at brand kits or, or style guides like I have in the past for large organizations, it's probably way more than a thousand characters. So you have to like pare that down. But for Jolly Roger Java, We've got a pretty small brand essence right here. So I'm just going to select all of these and that voice principle. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm just going to paste that right into here. And that's 587 characters. The spaces are characters as well. So I'm just going to kind of remove some extra uh, carriage returns there. And there we go. So we've got the mission. I'm just going to put these all on one line. We've got the mission. We've got the vision. We've got the tagline. Um, we've got the personality, the core values, and the overall voice principle. And then we're going to click done again at the bottom right there. And then that basically saves that brand voice to my template. And that's it. So my template is auto-saved as I'm uploading and adding things 
to this brand kit. The brand kit is ready to go at this point. If I go back up to manage brand kits, now I have two of those. I could edit it, rename it, or delete it if I wanted to. So now that we've got our brand kit created, let's figure out how we can actually use it. And I'm going to use this example where I'm going to create a banner for our new store opening in Kansas City for Jolly Roger Java. So we're gonna click design a banner, and then I've got all of these banner options that I could choose to kind of pre-fill my, um, my example. I can also filter by events if I wanted to. So I've got different like leadership events, things like that. Um, let's see, I'm not seeing a store opening. Okay, so I don't have the, the banner that I want to use. So I'm just gonna go up to the top and I'm going to describe my banner. So um, a banner for our new uh, store opening uh, of Jolly Roger Java in uh, the River Market of Kansas City. The opening date is June 1st, 2025. Uh, and there will be, uh, prize giveaways, right? Something like that. And then the next step is I'm going to select my brand and my color. So I've got Jolly Roger Java right there under my brand kits. We're going to select that as our brand identity. And then the sizing, there's different levels here. I'm going to do this as an Outlook event because maybe I want to post this out and send it out as Outlook. So I'm going to select that and then we're going to click Create right there. Okay, so we've got a few different options right here. Uh, I kind of like um, this one right here with the skull. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, it gave me four of them and I could copy, download it, or I want to go in and edit it as well. So I'm going to click Edit right here at the top or on the, the bottom corner, we're gonna click edit. And then this has uh, the imagery. I could change that if I wanted to. So I like that it's a steaming cup of golden skull surrounded by red and black accents. Uh, set against, I'm gonna say, set against the Kansas City skyline as a background, as the background simulating uh, the store's location, right? And then I'm gonna keep that same style. I could also change it to different uh, layouts and things. I could do like, you know, a, a geometric, a nostalgia pixel, something like that. Um, I think I'm gonna go for a bold comic book style. That sounds kind of fun. Then we're gonna click update. Okay, so I've got a few new options right here. I can do that. It's got a cool skyline in the background. That one's kind of wonky with the, the text right there. That one's pretty cool looking. I like that one or this one. This one definitely looks like Kansas City because that, that building is familiar in Kansas City. There's a couple other familiar looking buildings. So I'm gonna select this one right here. I think that's cool. Uh, the logo here is not quite right. It has a, uh, a um, a background on it. So I'm going to select that and then I'm just going to click remove background right here. And we're going to let AI kind of figure out the background removal. That didn't really work out. So actually I'm just going to uh, remove that whole image and I can go down to the brand itself. And because I've got the Jolly Roger Java brand selected, I'm going to add a different version of our logo right here. So I'm going to add that one and then remove the background. And hopefully that will work out a little bit better for me. Eh, it's, it is what it is. Um, it, you probably have like proper, you know, uh, no background images in your organization. And then we can see that if I click on the text, it's editable text in a banner. And you can see that it's using that Parado one, which I said, that's my header style font. Um, I could go into transform and I could add other fonts if I wanted to, but I'm just going to go in here and add text for a subheading and I'm going to drop that down. I'm going to select from my brand palette. I'm going to select that red. I'm going to say June 1st, 
2025, right? Because it, it forgot to put that on there. And then from there, I could just download it and do whatever I want. I could resize it. But that's the essence of the brand kit is available. It's using your fonts. It's using your logos, your colors. All of that stuff is added to uh, the experience whenever you are adding, uh, creating new banners, new images, all kinds of things in the new Create app. And that's a wrap on creating and using your first brand kit, complete with a store event banner in just a few minutes. I'm still digging into the org-wide brand kits and how admins will be able to roll that out across your Microsoft 365 tenant. So hit that subscribe button and watch for that admin deep dive to come soon in a new video. Thanks for watching and happy creating.